the Lord use you today in Jesus' name. You want this? Uh, hand hand? Praise the Lord. I've been looking forward to this with very, very much expectation. I really have. I thank God for each of you men, for what God's doing in your life, what he has spoken into you, and what he is about to bring forth. God has a purpose in all of this. This is not just another meeting, brothers. I believe we're, we're on the very outset of some new things that God is doing. And I'm, I'm not just talking off the top of my head. I really believe that with all my heart. Let's take just a moment and pray. Father, our Father, I thank you for these, your sons. I thank you, Lord, that you've given us ears to hear and hearts to respond to what you're saying. And Father, I ask in the name of your Son that you enable us to not only hear, but to receive and respond to that that you're saying and doing. We want to honor you with our lives, with the fruit of our lives. We want to see brought forth all that you've spoken, all that you've ordained over our lives, our households, our churches, and our communities. And Father, I thank you and I praise you for the privilege in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Mark said it earlier this morning. Every man needs a challenge. And the greatest challenge is the kingdom of God. Now, I want to give you some definitions. The kingdom of God, brothers, is not a place. The kingdom of God is a lifestyle. When you say kingdom of God, write, I want you to write this down. If you've got a pen and paper, pencil and paper, I want you to write what I'm fixing to say to you down because uh, you'll need to go back and look at it. We have practiced ways of thinking and we have religious understanding mostly about the word kingdom, the phrase kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is this, the rule of God in my life. The kingdom of God is about the rule of God in my life. How many believe Jesus is king? Amen. You believe that? Where there's a king, he has a kingdom. And where that king has a kingdom, he rules. Right? Right? <clears throat> You, when you were born again, you were translated into the kingdom of God. You were brought under the rule of God. Now, are you going to submit to it? I'm going to talk to you about that this morning, about coming under the rule of God. In uh, Matthew chapter 3, verse 1, and in Matthew chapter 4, verse 17, it talks about two men. John the Baptist first it says, came preaching the kingdom of heaven. Uh, let me just say this to you. Uh, I won't try to explain it to you, but Matthew says kingdom of heaven. All the other gospels use the term kingdom of God. They are one in the same thing. There is no difference. When, it, when the scripture says kingdom of heaven, it's not talking about going to heaven. It's talking about the rule of God in a man's life. So kingdom of heaven, kingdom of God, don't be uh, confused. They're one in the same. It says, uh, in those days, John the Baptist, Matthew 3, 1, John the Baptist came preaching the, in the wilderness and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Matthew four seventeen. at that time, Jesus began to preach and say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent means to change your mind. That's all it means. The Greek word metanoia is translated repent. It only means to change your mind. It doesn't mean you have to get out and bawl and squall and slang snot. It says change your mind. Change your mind about who God is. Change your mind. And the only way you really, I know you change your mind is 
how you live. If the way you live is different than the way you lived before, I know you changed your mind. If you've come under the rule of God, then you're going to live different than you ever lived before. You're not the same man. So Jesus came preaching the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. So now, let's, let's get some terms. I, I'm so full of this stuff that I, I don't know how to get it all out in the, in the time that I got. But I, by God's help, I will do that. The kingdom of God has to do with, or the word kingdom has to do with ruling and with dominion. When you say kingdom, you're talking about ruling and you're talking about dominion. And I want to tell you, that's what God was talking about in Genesis chapter 1. Uh, you can look there, Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. It says, God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion. God intended for man to rule in this earth. God made man to rule in this earth. God rules in the heavens, and he wants to rule in the earth through you, but you have, to, you have a part in ruling in this earth. You have a part in ruling in this earth. But we've, we've had some misunderstandings, some miscalculations, some misdirection concerning that. So he gave man dominion, gave man dominion in the earth. But there's another thing. Man also had dominion with himself if he wanted it. It's called free will. God gave every one of us free will. You do not have to come under the rule of God if you don't want to. God will not make you. You might wish you had, but uh, <laughs> he won't make you. Now, let's, let's look at a verse in uh, Luke 17. I'm going to ask you to do something. Uh, Pastor Mark will will have tapes of this. Uh, I suggest that not because it's me, but because what I'm what I'm sharing with you, you should go back and listen to this more than once. See, there was a movie on at the uh, at the theaters here a month or so ago called The Kingdom of Heaven. Any of y'all see it? Uh, there's a Guy that's willing to speak up and say something. Y'all afraid to go to movies? <laughs> Sometimes God talks through those things. And I went, I deliberately went because of the title. I wanted to see what it had to say. It wasn't have, doesn't have a whole lot to do with what we're talking about, but I had a little experience as I was going in. There was a woman that was selling tickets, and I, I said, I want to go see the movie Kingdom of Heaven, and she told me how much it was. I said, what do you know about the kingdom of heaven? She thought I was talking about the movie. She said, oh, it's full of violence. I said, no, I'm talking about the kingdom of heaven, not the movie, the kingdom of heaven. I said, what do you know about it? She says, oh, well, that just means going to heaven. That's what she said. You laugh, but let me tell you what, about 98% of the church thinks the same thing. They're clueless. They think it's talking about going to heaven. And when I'm talking to you to this morning about kingdom of heaven, kingdom of God, I'm not talking about going to heaven. I'm talking about allowing God to rule in your life in the earth today. That's what it's all about. I'm not, let me just say it. Let me get this out in the open. I am not the least bit concerned about going to heaven. I'm going there when the time comes. Jesus already took care of that. There's, that's not an issue with me. And it shouldn't be with you if you have confidence, trust, faith in who he is and what he did. I'm not worried. I don't wake up wondering if I'm going to get to go to heaven. I'm not afraid of the devil or hell, either one. Because my Lord's already defeated him. And he made in him, I am victorious. And I know that. I'm not guessing. I'm not wondering. It's a settled matter. But I am concerned about my life and about yours being under the rule of God today so that we can accomplish and fulfill in the earth what God's commissioned us to do. Now, every one of us have something different to be and to do, but nonetheless, you have a commission from God. And as you, allow, as you come under the rule of God, 
as you come under the rule of God, then you get into the place, you get to the place where you can fulfill that. Luke 17, 20. <clears throat> Jesus uh, was asked, it says, now he was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come. Let me tell you what, there has never been a time when the kingdom of God was not. There has never been a time when the kingdom of God was not. God has always been, and when, since He's always been, there's always been the rule of God. They were asking when the kingdom of God would come, and He answered and said, The kingdom of God does not come with observation, nor will they say, See here or see there, for indeed the kingdom of God is within you. The rule of God in your life is the issue. It's not about going to heaven. God didn't create... Let me just say this. Grab hold of your seats. God didn't create you for heaven. He created you for this earth. The Bible says that the heavens belong to the Lord and He created earth for man. You ought to go look in your Bible sometime and see how many times it says the righteous are going to inherit the earth. Let me mess with your mind a little bit. He didn't create you for heaven. He created you for earth. You say, well, I, I thought I was going to get to go to heaven. Well, you probably will for a little while, but you're going to be back here before it's all over with. <laughs> you say, well, you going to take heaven away from me? No. I'm going to give you what God really intended you to have. Dominion in the earth. Get that in your thinking. God created you for this earth. After you leave this body and the end of the age comes, well, then we'll be concerned about all of that other. He created you for this earth, and He has a purpose and a plan. And why would I want, why would you want to go to heaven not having fulfilled what God put you in this earth for? Why would you? Think about it. Es yeah, escape mentality. Now, go to Genesis chapter 4. I want to talk to you about ruling the kingdom within. You see, brothers, God said this to me uh, some years back. If the, the only way that the kingdom of God can come in the earth or the rule of God to come in the earth is for the rule of God first to be established in here. Until God rules in this kingdom, in this earth, then I am not fit, able, qualified for him to, to be an instrument in His hands to rule out here. Can you hear me? So I want to, I want to show you something in the Scripture. Now, I'm, we're going to look at some things that going to be a little touchy to you, but you know I don't care. I hope I upset you so much that you start looking to find out if what I'm saying is true. I love you, but I'm not going to be upset if you get upset. Fact is, I'm probably going to be glad. I'm just, I got old enough that I really don't care what you think about me. I am concerned about what you're doing and being in the kingdom of God. I don't care what you think about me. I love you, but I really don't care. You can love me or like me. It doesn't make it not like me. It doesn't make any difference. I'd rather you did, but I don't care. Not because I don't care about you, but because I don't care what you think about me. Okay? <laughs> Genesis chapter 4. Um, well, let's just start at verse 1. Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. Now, this is after the fall. This is after what happened in, in chapter 3, the, you know, the serpent in the garden and all of that stuff. So it says, she says, I've gotten a man from the Lord. And then she bore again, this time his brother Abel. Now, Abel was a keeper of the sheep. You might circle that because we're going to talk about that a little bit. Abel was a keeper of the sheep, and Cain was a tiller of the ground. He was a farmer. How many of you know those are both legitimate occupations? 
We probably got some of those here today. We got some cattle uh, farmers and we got some farmers that farm the ground. Anybody here do those, either one of those things? Okay. Those are legitimate occupations. And it says um, in verse 3, In the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. Abel also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of their fat. And the Lord respected Abel and his offering, but he did not respect Cain and his offering. And Cain was very angry, and his countenance fell. Now, brothers, I'm, I'm 67 years old, and I've been in church all my life. My earliest memories, I can remember being two or three years old, being in a Sunday school nursery. And I've heard just about anything you can imagine preached. And some of it was God, and a lot of it wasn't. Heard a lot of religion, and I've heard a lot of spiritual stuff. And mostly, when people talk about this group of scriptures that I'm talking to you about, they say the reason God didn't accept Cain's offering is because it wasn't a blood sacrifice. I don't believe that. You say, well, God told him to bring a blood sacrifice. Well, let's talk about that a little bit. You see, what he's talking about is bringing an offering to God of your increase. One was a farmer of the ground. The other was a farmer of animals. If you know your Bible, you know that in uh, Exodus or Leviticus, one of those books in there, God talked to him about bringing grain offerings. That's something that was grown out of the ground. God didn't accept it because it come out of the ground and the ground was cursed. I don't believe that. Because he wouldn't have told them later on to bring grain offerings if he wasn't going to ever accept a grain offering. You, sometimes you got to think when you read the Bible, just don't believe every dad burn thing you've been told. Sometimes we've been told stuff that's not God. Somebody just talking. And so, Cain brought his offering, but did you notice that it says that Abel brought the firstlings or the first fruits and the fat? Mm -hmm. You know what that relates to? The firstlings, the first fruits, has to do with the tithe. Now, I know I told you I was going to say something you wasn't going to like, some of you. See, I'm not after your money. I'm after your heart because that's what God's after. And, and tithe is not just about money. Tithe is about a willing obedience to God. And that's, that, that's what Pastor Mark's been talking about. Coming under. See, if you're under the rule of God, you're going to do what He says. Don't make any difference what He says. So, Cain made God an offer. He did. He just brought an offering. He made God an offer. How many of you know God doesn't have to take your offer? You ever make a guy an offer for a piece of land he didn't take? <laughs> God doesn't have to take your offer. Abel brought the first fruits and the fat. If I was doing this, in, talking about this in the church, I would talk about a tithe and a seed offering. Now you say, well, it doesn't say tithe. Well, let me tell you something. If Abel knew what was acceptable to God, Cain could have known. He did know. He just did what he wanted to do. See, Abel knowing what God would accept tells me Cain knew too. Cain did not do. He, you see, this is, this is, I told you that God gave you a free will. 
Abel was exer or Cain rather was exercising his free will. He was doing what he wanted to do. He wasn't doing what God said do. The tithe, brothers, is about the attitude of the heart. It's not about money. How many of you know God doesn't use money? God said in Psalms 50, he said, if I wanted something to eat, I wouldn't ask you for it. He said, I own all the cattle on a thousand hills. The silver and gold in them are hills. <laughs> God doesn't use money. But what he does need, what he does desire, is the willing obedience of a man's heart. And it's so strange. You can always tell when God's got a man's heart because he's also got that man's pocketbook. <laughs> you say, how come? Well, that's, listen, what those guys brought was their money. Abel's money was his sheep, right? right? Cain's money was his crop. Abel willingly brought, come under the, the word of God and brought to God what God asked for and God accepted him. Cain didn't. And it, it, the Bible says... He did not respect Cain and his offering. And Cain was very angry and his countenance fell. I think Cain was embarrassed. I think he was embarrassed. And he got angry. Did you ever get embarrassed and then get angry because you were embarrassed? I have. And I think that's what happened. His, his little brother was accepted by God and he wasn't. But it was because of his choice. Now look with me, if you would, at chapter 4, verse 6. Genesis chapter 4, verse 6. So the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry? And why is your countenance fallen? You made your own choice. You did what you wanted to do. Why are you upset? Verse 7. Now I want you to notice this. He says, it, God says to Cain, Cain, if you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin lies at the door, and its desire is for you, but you should rule over it. Now, I want to talk about this verse a little bit, these two verses. He said, if you do well, will you not be accepted? He said, if you did, he was in effect was saying, Cain, if you'd have done what I had asked you to do, I would have accepted you. That's what he's saying. It isn't because of who he was. It was because of the attitude of his heart. And then he says, And if you do not do well, sin lies at the door. What was the sin? Disobedience, but the disobedience was the result of his willing choice to do what he wanted to do. Attitude of heart did what he wanted to do. Any of y'all tired of doing what you want to do? If you're not, you should be. You say, well, you're talking to Christians. Yeah, I am. I am on purpose. God's got more for you than you have any idea. God has more to accomplish in you than you could imagine. He's able to do more than you can think or ask. And you know why we don't think and we don't ask? Because we know we haven't done what He said do. We haven't willingly, fully come under His authority. And I didn't say you, brothers. I said we. That puts me in there too. That's what Paul was saying when he said, I'm, I'm pressing towards the mark, but I haven't fully attained it. I know I'm saved. I know Jesus is my Lord. I know if I keeled over dead right here, right now, I would go to be with the Lord. But I also know that I haven't fully accomplished in this earth what God has called me to. And I know you know you haven't. If you're honest with yourself. If you want to go on deceiving yourself, just go ahead. <laughs> Have I lit your fire yet? Have I agitated you enough to get you looking and thinking? 
If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin lies at the door and its desire is for you. But listen to this. He says, but you should rule over it. That tells me that God was saying to Cain that he could rule over this thing that was in him that caused him to resist obeying God. God will never tell a man to do something he cannot do. You should rule over it. I was, I was in a, a prison facility up at uh, Urania where I, I go a couple of times a month. And the brothers were singing and praising the Lord. And I, uh, the song they were singing is, has something to do that uh, trouble won't stay always. Uh, I don't remember. Won't trouble won't last always. Yeah. You know the song. Trouble won't last always. And they were singing that and singing that. And while they were singing that, I heard the Lord say, Rule thou in the midst of thine enemies. And I popped up like that. I said, What are you saying, God? I knew that was in the Scripture. He says, Rule thou in the midst of thine enemies. And I began to... God give me a whole message while I, just because I heard that song. And what I'm giving to you is what He gave to me that night to those men in the prison. You say, we're not in a prison more than you think. More than you, you out walking around loose, but church folks got more prisons going on inside of them than they know. Just because you walking around loose don't mean you not bound up. Praise God. So listen to what he says. If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin lies at the door. And its desire is for you, but you should rule over it. Rule over that thing that's in you that causes you to resist what God is saying. Now, let me tell you what I believe. You don't have to believe it if you don't want to. I believe that... As God was speaking to Cain that he was reaching for that man at that moment. Because God is always reaching for his man. He is always reaching for his man. And if Cain would have said, Lord, I missed it. I didn't do it right. I'll change, I changed my mind right now. I'll go get the rest of the tithe and I'll submit and I'll obey you. You know what? He would have ruled over at that moment that enemy that was in him. Any of y'all see the movie The Lord of the Rings? Oh, my God, you went to see the Lord of the Rings? Yeah, I saw all three of them. You know why? Because J.R.R. Tolkien was a believer. He wrote some strange, different stuff, but there's some truths, spiritual truths in that. The ring, those of you that saw the movie, you know the ring, when they put the ring on, it caused problems for the guy that put it on. And I was watching that, and I said, Lord, what is the ring? And the Lord said, self-will. God gave you self-will, but when you operate in self-will, it brings destruction in your life. The reason He gave you self-will is because He wants you to give it back to Him. Put it in the fire and let it burn up. Give back to God your self-will and let His will be made manifest in and through your life. Because if you wear the ring, the enemy's going to chase you down. If you operate in self-will, the enemy's going to chase you down. <laughs> Break it off and beat you in the head with it. If you do not do well, you will not be... If you do well, will you not be accepted? If you do not do well, sin lies at the door... And its desire is for you, but you should rule over it. 
So let me just read some thoughts to you here. Doing well here is referring to obeying the Lord, which Cain did not do. He brought an offering, not the first fruits, not the tithes. Abel chose to bring the first fruits, the tithe. Abel brought the fat or the seed offering, extra. If Abel knew this and, it, and this precept, that then Cain could know it as well. Cain chose not to obey which he had. You know you have the right not to obey? You have that right. Most of us have been operating in it a whole lot and didn't realize it. You say, self-will is evil? Self-will not given back to God will create you trouble. The, the psychiatrist talked to us about self-determination. Self-determination. You can do that, but you get to determine what's going to happen in your life. How about letting God determine what's going to happen in your life? How many of you know He can think of better stuff than you can? And so this whole issue here about man, about men, is giving back to God what He has given to us by obeying Him, coming under His authority. Now, somebody says, well, Cain couldn't really do that because Jesus hadn't gone to the cross yet. Well, let me just give you a little thought. Your Bible says that Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God slain from the foundations of the world. That means before the world was created, before this universe was created, before God said, let there be light, Jesus Christ already was the Lamb slain. And when God said to Cain, you can rule over this thing, he was telling him what he could do. And if he would have believed God, how many of you know it? That's all that Abraham did to become righteous. Genesis 15, 6 says, Abraham believed God, and God counted it to him as righteousness. The way I know you believe God's because you do what God says do. Don't tell me you believe God and then disobey. You didn't believe God. Because that word believe is an action word. It's, a, it's the verb form of the word faith. Now, in talking to you about the tithe, let me just say this to you, brothers. God's not looking for your money or your possessions, but He's looking for a heart of trusting obedience to Him. You say, well, it doesn't say tithe back there in Genesis chapter 4. No, it doesn't use the word tithe. It says first fruit. But if you will study tithe and first fruit, you will find them connected together. They are not separate. God's interested in your obedience, but the only way you can demonstrate your obedience is to do what He says do. It's very simple. Now, I want you to look with me at some other scriptures. <clears throat> Psalms 110. I don't know if I said it a while ago. I started to. Uh, you need to put in a, a request for the tape of this, this word, probably all of them. But I want you, I want you to, because I want you to go back and think about this. I don't want you to forget it. See, how many of you know the devil doesn't care if you're saved? But he'd like to keep you from finding out why you got saved. See, he'd like you to continue to think you got saved just so you could go to heaven. That's what the devil... He can't... St and let me tell you something else. The devil can't stop you from being saved. He's not that big. He doesn't have that much power. He can't keep you from being saved. But he has managed to manipulate our thinking, and we didn't figure out why we got saved. You didn't get saved just so you could go to heaven, brothers. Uh, let me pull the wool off your eyes. I'll say it again. You didn't get saved just to go to heaven. You got saved so you could manifest the life of God, 
the rule of God in this earth so that other men who are still living in a place called death and darkness... When you were born again, you were translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear Son. And there's still men out there that God's reaching for that they can't see God because they don't have any light. You're the light. But you have to live it. You have to obey God. You have to follow God for them to see. Get your mind off yourself and what's going to happen to you. Get your mind on the purpose and plan of God. My Father meets my needs. Your Father will meet your needs. He'll make provision for you. Get your mind off of how you're going to make it. You're going to make it because He's your provider. Psalms 110. Verse 1. The Lord said to my Lord, Set at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. The Lord shall send the rod of your strength out of Zion. Rule in the midst of your enemies. That is what God Almighty was saying to Cain. Rule over this thing. You know where your big, who your biggest enemy is and where he lives? Right in here. It is not the devil. Your biggest enemy is self. We have found the enemy and they is us. Rule in the midst of your enemies. Now, Proverbs 16. See, what I've been talking to you about, brothers, is ruling the kingdom within. That's, wh that's what the message would be titled, is ruling the kingdom within. Proverbs 16, verse 32. He who is slow to anger is better than the mighty. And he who rules his own spirit than he who takes a city. God said, if you rule the kingdom within, he said, you're better than the man that can take a whole city. You can't rule your spirit until you, you come under the rule of God. You come under the rule of God by doing what God says. If you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Have you done that? You see, the new, listen, I'm going to say this to you too, and I hope it jerks you around real good. The new birth is not about heaven. The new birth is about the kingdom of God. The new birth is about coming under the rule of God. I'm going to say it. There's going to be people in heaven that never were born again, guys. I knew that'd grab you. How many of you know Job never was born again? In the sense that you and I know it. Because Jesus, you know, he didn't, he didn't ever heard the message. But he obeyed the word that he heard from God. Jesus said, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. If Except a man be born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. You see, it's coming under the rule of God is what it's talking about. Now, you can call me a heretic if you like. I don't care. There will be people in heaven that didn't have what you have. John the Baptist didn't have what you have because Jesus said, you can find it in your Bible, John, uh, Jesus said concerning John the Baptist, there never was a greater prophet than him. But... He that's the least in the kingdom of God is greater than John the Baptist. It's in your Bible. Matthew chapter 11. I'll let you find the verse. Are you hearing me? You say, well, you don't believe in pe people being born again? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. But I'm saying let's look at what the Word says. Let me give you a little th mind game you can play with yourself. Uh, go find the phrases, the verses in the Bible where it says, uh, and you'll find these in Matthew and Mark particularly, where Jesus says, the kingdom of God is like. The kingdom of heaven is like. Now, when you do that, 
Instead of saying that, say, take these two phrases. First say, going to heaven is like, and then read the verse. And then the next, the other thing, read the verse this way and say, coming under the rule of God is like There's a difference. If you take the, and I, if I had the time, I could take you and show you, but write these things down. The kingdom of heaven is like, and then put, going to heaven is like, and read the rest of the verse. Then read it with, coming under the rule of God is like. He gave parables, and he wasn't talking about going to heaven, guys. He was talking about being under the rule of God so you could produce the fruit Accomplish the things in this earth that God has called you to accomplish in this earth. Not talking about you getting to go to heaven. Adam didn't lose heaven. Adam lost the kingdom. Proverbs 25. 28 Proverbs 25 28 says Who, whoever has no rule over his own spirit is like a city broken down without walls if you're not under the rule of God your life is like a city broken down without walls because you can't rule you can't rule but you and God together can so come under the rule of God how do you do that? Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God. Jesus, I believe that you went to the cross and died. I believe, Jesus, that you were resurrected. And I receive you into my life in order that I can fulfill the purpose that you've ordained in and through my life. You say, well, you got saved. Yeah. Yeah, I, I believe in people being saved, but I believe in going on past that. There's more to this deal than just getting saved. It's like when a baby is born, guys. How would you like to have a 30-year-old baby you still changing his diapers? You, you, why won't you want them to grow up? God wants you to grow up. Let's get out of our diapers. Let's grow up. Find out what God's doing. This thing is about God and His sons. You're sons of God. I, started, I prayed that way. I, I thanked God for you, His sons, that I had the privilege to talk to. You're sons of God. You need to believe that. You're not just some old slimy, dirty sinner that just barely made it in. You're a son of God if you've received Jesus as Lord. And God has a purpose in your life. One last verse, maybe. maybe. <laughs> Proverbs chapter 24, verse 10 says, If you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. Brothers, when you were born again, the strength, the power, the ability of God was imparted to you. And you don't have to faint in the day of adversity. Jesus very clearly said, in this world you will have tribulation. But he said, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And since he's overcome the world, brothers, and he lives in you, you too can overcome. One more verse. First John 5. And then I'm going to give it back to Pastor Mark. First John chapter 5, verse 1. Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Any of you guys have sons, daughters? Were they born of you? They're your son and daughter because they were born of you. He, who, he, who, whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. You, you're born of God. You're a son of God. Amen. Say this. I am, I am. a son of God. I was born by the Spirit of God. I am a son of God. I will yield my spirit, my soul, my body 
to my Father. And He and I, together, will accomplish and fulfill His will for my life in this earth. Amen. Praise God. Pastor Mark, where are you? There he is. All Praise right. God. Amen. Coming under the rule of God. Is God ruling in your life? Praise the Lord. Whoo, that's challenging, isn't it? You know, it's an extraordinary thing for me to think about the, the awesomeness and the wisdom of God. You know, how many of y'all love that song that says, uh, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. That's some light, you see. Some, and then I love this part. It says, when we've been there 10,000 years, 10,000 years, 10,000 10, years, 10 million years. Eternity is longer than 10 million years, I believe. You say. So, so y'all all remember my faith. So when you see me in heaven like in 10 million years from now, you, just, you, just, you remember back when we were in Mansura. You see? In this time of our flesh, which can be so short, can be only one breath. Even now, it can be for babies in the womb, not even a breath. Eight years, 80 years, 88 years, 108 years. So limited, so short in time to determine the eternal destiny. And while we're in this flesh, God asks one thing of us, is to let Him rule in our lives. Isn't that amazing? Because His rule in our lives is the best thing. But there's this thing in us that resists it. Pride. Rebellion. Being led by this. Being led by this. Instead of being led by this. And men, we need to understand that we do not really want to do the will of God. We're not all Abel's. Most people I've met, most, I was a Cain that wanted to do it my way. But boy, I found out my way was a messed up way. And somebody said, Jesus is the way. Amen.